Hey guys, what's up? Life Belt Joe here. Today we're going to discuss the brand new 2019 action film Godzilla, King of Monsters, King of the Monsters. This film is directed by Michael Dougherty. Oh my god, I have a brain fart because I'm trying to think of so much, so many things to say about this film. I'm trying to get everyone's names down. Uh, Vera Farmiga, Millie Bobby Brown star in this film. Um, the, uh, I forget his name, the same Asian actor who was in the first film as a scientist introducing us to Gajira, Godzilla. Um, he's reprising his role in here. There's a bunch of other actors thrown into this mix. Um, so this film takes place five years after the 2014 film, and it's referenced that Godzilla came about to fight the Moto the Motos um, in 2014, how the land has repopulated immensely and quickly, um, vegetation-wise, because of the radiation that came off that was, it, it, like, re- how how Vera explained it was like when there's a forest fire and like there's the, so much fertile f soil for more and more plants to grow lusciously kind of a thing. So it's a matter of Godzilla is around, right? He's still chilling on the ocean. Um, they've tracked to his f frequency, basically, uh, as in his own waves, his own radio frequency. Not really radio, but his own frequency, everyone vibrates at a certain kind of thing, right? So he, he can communicate alpha-wise, vocally, uh, sonically. So there's this this uh, suitcase thing called the Orca, basically, which uh, Vera and her husband had created, you know, back in like 2014-ish when Godzilla destroyed Seattle and they lost their son in that, you know, battle. Um... And the orca was originally designed for, to communicate with whales based off of the sonar, the, the you know, the sonar and, and, and frequency and stuff, S the sound waves. And then the program, the orca program wound up being useful to get the alpha signature and, you know, communicate with the titans, as they're called. So there are 17 titans and counting on planet Earth. Some were in hibernation, some are hatched and roaming. Um... They're explaining the mythology behind them all that every culture has had, you know, their standard titan. There's always the hydra. There's always the three-headed dragon with wings. So where did, you know, that the mythos, that story come from? Why was it that in Western culture you slay the dragon, but in Eastern culture you revere the dragon? It's, you know, a redemption dragon. It's, you know, empowerment and focus moving on, stuff like that. So it's cool seeing the mythology brought into this place, into this story. It's nice seeing all of these scientists discuss science. And it's nice seeing Vera Farmiga go twisty and unleash King Gajora, right? Gajora, Gajora, can never say it correctly. The three-headed gold winged alien Hydra that he is. So it's that Alpha versus Godzilla Alpha. Godzilla being the Alpha Titan of planet Earth. Uh, Terra, King Kachura being the alpha titan of whatever planet he came from, however many thousands of years ago. What was also nice is that they were examining an ancient civilization underwater where Godzilla goes to refuel, basically, on radiation. And then that's where one of the scientists, you know, sacrifices himself, the, uh, the Asian guy whose name I can't remember, um, to give, basically... Uh, nuclear bomb to Godzilla to recharge him quicker to then destroy Kachira, who then there's this massive Boston fight. Rodan comes about in uh, Mexico. Mothra comes about in China. Oh my God, Mother Mothra. She's just so amazing and gorgeous and beautiful. And her song is there. And it's just so many throwbacks to the old school classic Godzilla films that my brother and I grew up on. There we were sitting, you know, age two, three, four, just cramming down the Godzilla films, cramming down the King Kong films, cramming down the Jurassic Park films. 96 is when Jurassic Park, The Lost World Jurassic Park came out. Uh, 98 is when the Godzilla film came out, which took place in New York. So we were, we're well, well versed in our, in our kaijus, in our monster dinosaur lizard creatures, right? They're great. They're fun. They're beasts. They're gods. So it was great seeing all of these massive fights happen within, you know, the, the 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 planet. You know, you had Rodan and Mothra attacking each other at one point. You had 
Gujarat and Mothra, you had Gujarat and Rodan, you had Godzilla and Mothra, they're, they're the coexisting partners, and then R.I.P. Mothra, my god, that was such, so tragic. You had Godzilla and Rodan, you had Godzilla and Gajira multiple times. Battle scenes in the ocean, battle scenes on land, battle scenes in Mexico, battle scenes in uh, all over the continents, all over the continents, because all these different monsters are, all these different titans are waking up and trying to find their alpha. Vera's mindset is releasing these beasts, releasing the titans, um, brings harmony to the planet because they keep us in check. Because humanity is a virus and we're polluting, there's too much carbon dioxide in the air, you know, we're destroying this planet. And by releasing the titans and their radiation, you know, helps regrow everything, you know, as they were using San Francisco as a, you know, marker point from the first battle of Godzilla vs. the Moto in 2014 that this is how she can save the world. This is how the world can be saved with the Titans coexisting with um, humanity and having humanity fight on Godzilla's side against Gajira. Gorgeous scenes. And it's funny because a lot of critics hated this movie because there's too much action. It's an action movie. It's a monster movie. It is a kaiju movie. It's exactly what Pacific Rim was great about. The first and second Pacific Rim, they're kaiju movies. They're robots versus kaijus. Perfect. Godzilla. It's a monster movie. The Jurassic World films. Jurassic World, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, all the Jurassic Park films. They're monster movies. They're supposed to have action in these monster movies, right? Duh. But what's cool is that Vera's speech, Vera's character's speech, um, is all about the Gaia theory. And the Gaia theory was introduced to us back when uh, Kingsman first came out. Matthew Vaughn's Kingsman. I don't remember what year Kingsman came out. I'm embarrassed that I don't remember what year Kingsman came out. 2015? That makes sense, because Golden Circle was 2018. And then 2020 is the third, which is really the prequel. And then the third is going to be the last installment of the Eggsy Har Harry story. Love me some Taron Edgerton. Whew. Love me some Taron Edgerton. So, Matthew Vaughn's Kingsman... Um, introduced us to the Gaia theory, which is um, global warming is a fever, humanity is the virus, so, um, you know, the, the, the fever is what helps the antibodies, you know, get rid of the virus. And in this particular Godzilla version of the Gaia theory, the virus is still humanity, the fever is the global warming, right? But the antibodies are the titans, and the Titans are the ones who attack everything, attack humanity, get rid of humanity, get rid of the polluting-making individuals to order, in order to regrow the planet again, based off what they saw in Seattle in 2014. San Francisco? Seattle? My God, I can't remember. It was on the West Coast. It was San Francisco. It's definitely San Francisco. I remember that building, the pointy building. Love it. Matthew Vaughn's Kingsman is perfect, as we've discussed in the past. Um, the Gaia theory is amazing and logical and accurate. And bringing it into the Godzilla universe, perfect. Perfect. So much history brought into effect from thousands of years of history of these creatures. It's wonderful. Now, what's cool about it is Millie Bobby Brown being Millie Bobby Brown. So anytime she's huddled at a door and screaming... That's a Millie Bobby Brown move, right? Perfect. That's an 11 move. Because that's what she does in Stranger Things. And it's just, it's Millie. Like, if she's not screaming, crouched up behind a door, like, what is she doing on the screen? You know? Like, that's just her move. Like, it's her move. So anytime you're, like, mad and want to vent or scream, you just crawl up in a ball and go like this and go, ah, and you just scream. And then that's a Millie Bobby Brown move. Perfect. What else? What else? Oh, Michael Dougherty directed this film. Now, what's interesting about Michael Dougherty directing this film is Michael Dougherty is wonderful. Wonderful artist. Absolutely wonderful artist. Um, within comics, within art, within props, within storytelling, within movies. Right? He did the 2007 Trick or Treat, which is a cult phenomenon. And what's interesting is that a sequel, he announced doing a sequel a long time ago. And then he gave us a comic book as a sequel. And we're like, okay. It's more of a prequel, but okay. 
but you promised us the movie. And then he makes 2015's Krampus, which is a horror Christmas film. And we're like, this is PG-13. Why are we laughing for most of this? Um, great concept of a retelling of, of, you know, the mythos of Krampus. But this should have been rated R. No. And then he creates a comic book of Krampus. And we're like, why? You keep telling us Trick or Treat 2. And then they announced that he's directing the sequel to Godzilla. And we're like, what is happening right now? Where the hell is the sequel to Trick or Treat? Where's Trick or Treat 2? Jean-Luc Belladois has done so many photo shoots at so many different horror cones with Sam people in Sam costumes. Where is Trick or Treat 2? Right? So Mike has worked on this Godzilla film for a very long time. The production took a long time. Um, it's been five years since the since the last film came out. But rightfully so. A lot of work went into this film. A lot of storytelling went into it. A lot of craftsmanship went into this film. So, Mike, I love you. I always will. I will always root for you. This film was amazing. I give you a lot of credit for it because this film was beautifully done. Beautifully done. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, so... Hope you start working on Trick or Treat 2. I need it, Mike. Mike, I need it. I need it. There's only so many times I can hold that bitten lollipop from Trick or Treat Studios. Gorgeously sculpted, by the way. Chris Efros is just on point with that company, man. Like, obsessed. Hashtag obsessed. But I need me a sequel. I need me a Trick or Treat 2. I need the joy of Sam wreaking havoc on those who disobey the, the rules of Halloween. I want to see Sam's origin birth. I want to see that. What fiery pit is he crawling out of? What pumpkin patch is he crawling out of? Ooh, I like it. I like it. Let's say he's the great pumpkin. Ooh, I like it. Or his dad's the great pumpkin. Even better. Oh, Mike, let's do this. Let's do this. What did you guys think of Godzilla, King of the Monsters? What did you guys think of Rodan? What did you guys think of Mothra? What did you guys think of Godzilla? What did you think of Gojira? What did you think of King Ghidorah? What did you think? What did you think? This was a great movie. I loved it. Enjoy my hollow, guys.